Okay, we'll call the regular city council meeting on October 17th at 7 p.m. to order. Roll call, please. Uh, oh. Gee. We stand and join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. Mayor Copeland is absent. James Burton? Here. Ken Jones? Here. Jeff Gard? Here. Melina Meyer? Is absent. Ann Schaefer is absent. David Allison? Here. And James Weiss is absent. That's a quorum of council. Okay, can we get a motion to approve the regular agenda? I move to approve the regular agenda. Second. I move and second to approve the regular agenda. I just would like to add Belin Cook from the NVE as a guest speaker so that she's not limited to her three minutes, if we could do that. There's no objection. No problem. Do that. Okay, all those in favor of the regular agenda, say aye. Aye. Oppose, motion carries unanimously. Disclosure of close conflict of interest. Hearing none. Communications by and petitions from visitors. Guest speaker, Blynn Cook. Welcome. Thank you very much. My name is Belen Cook and I'm the sobriety celebration uh, coordinator for the native village of Iyak. Uh, this evening I do not have a schedule, but I will give you what I have. We are working on the schedule and I have some exciting things to uh, let you know. So I'll start here shortly. First of all, I, I'd like to thank council for your support in the city of Cordova for always uh, supporting the sobriety celebration. This year, it's the 25 years that we've been doing that. Uh, the first year that we did it was back in December. Uh, we didn't know if it would continue and it has. And so we're very proud of that. And like I said, thank you very much. Some of the speakers that we are going to have, uh, one is uh, Mike Jackson, which I think you're all familiar with. Uh, he uh, is with the dance group, the Key Kwan, and uh, he has just retired from being the uh, Cake Magistrate. Uh, we have Brandon Johnson. Uh, he's a young man that's been asked to continue to come to our sobriety celebration. Uh, he was pretty small when he first started coming from Yakutat. He was in the dance group. Uh, he's now a young adult in his 30s, has two children, and he uh, continues to talk about his road to uh, sobriety and where he is now. The other uh, person is, we all know Representative Louise Stutes, and she plans to come, and I'm not sure if her husband's stormy. Uh, Tiffany Hall is from uh, Recover Alaska. She is the executive director. She came, uh, not her, but her assistant came a couple months ago and did a presentation for family resource for the teens. And she has asked to come, and what's very powerful is that she is a recovering alcoholic, and she's gonna talk about her own journey. Uh, we have Eli Darren from the Kanitsi tribe in Kenai, and that is with the tribal court, and he is the second person that has graduated from that, and he uh, will be coming as a speaker. Uh, Matt Rush, um, uh, the uh, clinician for mental health and substance abuse, at uh, the, our clinic or the Ilanka Culture, or the hospital clinic, or sorry, I've had a long day. Uh, the Ilanka Clinic uh, will be uh, speaking on their new program that they have for uh, recovery from um, opioids. Uh, then we have uh, Gene Tagabon. Uh, he's also known as the Crazy Raven. Uh, he's Clinkett and he's got, um, I think he's also um, Shim Shian. And he uh, works with children, adults, and one of the ways he does his healing work is doing storytelling. Uh, I don't know him personally, but 
Uh, you can check him out on YouTube, and he uh, is, is just very good at what he does. And uh, he will also be doing a school assembly at the high school and the, the grade school on Friday, uh, November 9th. We also have uh, Verne, Bor uh, Verne Borner. Uh, she is the director for the health board, the Alaska Native Health Board, and she will be speaking as well as her daughter, Clara, that's gonna talk to youth about different things that youth can do in their lives. Uh, then we will have Commander Colin Branson. He will also be speaking. And then we have uh, Phil, Phyllis Chelsea. Uh, she will be sh uh, sharing the keynote with uh, Jean. And um, quite a few years ago, I believe it's about 20 years, it may be longer than that, uh, the Alkali uh, Village in um, in uh, Canada, uh, they had a large problem with substance abuse. Everybody above seven had problems with alcohol. They decided uh, amongst themselves that they would find a way to make it a clean village, and they have. And uh, she's gonna speak about that. And uh, so that's also gonna be really great. On a, on a lighter note, uh, we are going to have a concert on Thursday, November 8th at the high school. And Danny O'Keefe, some of you may know Good Time Charlie's Got the Blues, uh, he will be performing as well as Bobby Walker. Bobby Walker also is gonna be a speaker and he's gonna talk about his 18 years of sobriety. Uh, let me see what else. And Sean O'Brien, I did not bring the t-shirt. I broke with tradition. We have him at the village and you can see the design. It is an awesome design. And then at the veteran ceremony, uh, Clive Torgerson is going to uh, organize that, and Wendy Rainey is going to be part of that with the auxiliary of the veterans. And then Kay Adams, they're going to do a presentation uh, that, uh, for some of the veterans or the veterans. And so that's pretty much what I got tonight. So I hope you all come. And again, thank you very much for your support. Any questions? Thank you no, very much. you're welcome. Well, thank Have you, Glenn. Uh, congratulations on 25 years. It'll be a good celebration. Well, good. And I hope to see you all there. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Uh, for the record, somebody did somebody join us on the phone? Yeah, I did, Melina. Okay, okay. thank you. Get that marked in the mm -hmm. roll call there. Uh, okay, we're still in communications by petitions from visitors. Anybody else? Have any thoughts for us this evening? For those of you on the phone, there's eight or ten people here in the audience, but doesn't look like anybody wants to say anything special. So with that, we'll go to chairpersons and representatives of boards and commissions. CCMC, I don't see anybody here from there. And uh, School board, I think they're having their meeting tonight yeah. as well. So we don't have either of those. So student council rep is MIA as well. So <laughs> nothing else under communication. So go to approval of the consent calendar. Oh, I meant to just correct also that for number six in the consent calendar, that is an excused absence, not unexcused. Okay, okay, so to get that, we're changing item six to a excused, not unexcused. And I'll call the roll on the consent calendar then. James Weiss is absent. Ken Jones? Yes. Melina Meyer? Yes. Ann Schaefer is absent. David Allison? Yes. James Burton? Yes. Jeff Gard? Yes. The consent calendar is approved. Approval of the minutes. Somebody want to move? Need a motion to approve the minutes from October 3rd. I move to approve the minutes of October 3rd council, regular council meeting. Second. And moved and seconded. Any discussion? I think the clerk had a couple of clerical items. Yes. Just on, on page four of the packet, which is page three of three of the minutes, um, I put the date that it was approved as October 3rd, but it's October 17th. 
So I'll make that edit before I make them permanent records of the city. Anything else on the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Consideration of bids. We have the direction to the manager to negotiate the purchase of a refuse dumpster truck. Anybody care to make a motion? Um, I move that we direct the manager to negotiate the purchase of a refuse dump truck to replace our Crabbable. There a second. Okay, for that. I'll take it for a second of special. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, Andrew, you want to give a quick report first? worn out and we need to do something we've added five percent uh, revenue increase to the enterprise funds for the future but at this juncture um, the thought being that um, use the uh, depreciate or use the fund balance and uh, the remaining from the um, permanent fund and then pay it back or all the money from the permanent fund. You have several options that are available to you there, but I think it's imperative that we buy a new refuse truck. Okay, maker of the motion. <clears throat> this is part of what I've been talking about. We have not been funding for this stuff. It's not like we've got an option for it. We're not bailing, we've got to drive it out there. If we, the truck goes down, we can't even get our garbage to the dump. We got to get it out of the truck, have it dump. So I don't see that we have any choice. Second of the motion was that Jones or Bert? It was Jones. Jones? Yeah. Um, if we, you know, as long as we're using the refuse saving and then it's a loan, then I could potentially support this. I want to make sure that it's going to be paid back by. The refuse department, not by the general. I'm not sure how that works. Yeah, I, I, I would tend to agree with uh, Council Member Jones there. Um, my only question, I guess, is is the order of things, and, and you know, we're, if we're approving to go ahead and sign a contract with somebody, but yet we haven't figured out the funding mechanism. Uh, I think we're a little out of, out of order there. I think we should be discussing how we're going to fund it before we sign a contract with somebody. But um, anyway, that's that would be my question. Here is the order of of things. I think it's because we're where it appears on the agenda under consideration of bids versus the ordinance itself, and it's just sequenced that way because of. But but the ordinance itself wouldn't wouldn't pass tonight on final reading anyway. It's gonna take another meeting to, to pass that ordinance on second reading and it's gonna take seven votes. So um, that's not gonna to happen tonight. But if no, we but approve, I'm sure you could give the direction to the manager. And and we're not signing a contract, we're it's just to negotiate a contract. But you'll still come before you to You've already got that in your bid that's on your desk. There's nothing to negotiate at this point in time. So um, anyway, I guess I would prefer to to wait until we're sure how we're gonna finance it before we direct to sign the contract. But I guess if we added to that that negotiated contract not to not to exceed prior to uh, funding availability then and I can go with that. I got certainly like Council Member Jones I have more to discuss at the time of of the ordinance itself but um, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor. Yeah, go ahead. Can we table this until after we discuss the ordinance? 
Oh, we, we certainly we certainly could, but Does that's that help our position. Well, that doesn't satisfy me at all because we we're not going to even if the ordinance passes tonight, it's 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 still got to have a second reading, and then the second reading is going to take six votes and the mayor or or seven of us all to support it, and that's not going to happen T tonight. We can pass it on just a simple majority, but um, that still doesn't get the funding in place. I'm sure you can amend the motion that's on the floor right now to say just that, what you had said. Yeah, so I guess I would amend the motion to, and, and just because I'm chairing doesn't mean I can't make a motion, I guess. Yeah. So I would make a motion to, to add um, to the wording that um, pending funding um, being finally approved. Final, finally approved, yeah. Second year amendment. Okay, so we're discussing now whether or not to add add wording to the uh, to the main motion to uh, require funding to be in place before it's finalized. Any other discussion on that? Hearing none. All those in favor of the amendment, say aye. 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 Oppose. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, the main motion is um, to approve negotiating the contract um, not to be completed until funding is in place. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, can we get a roll call on that, please? Yes. Um, Melina Meyer. Melina Meyer. Sorry, do you know? Aye. Yes? Yes. Sorry. Okay, Ken Jones? Yeah. And Schaefer is absent. Jeff Gard? Yes. David Allison? Yes. James Weiss is absent. James Burton? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Okay, reports of officers. Um, I didn't get anything from the mayor. He's back in D.C. Um, so any comments or questions you have for him, send them on to him. Manager's report. Thank you, Noel. <clears throat> I'll be out of town beginning Friday uh, until the 29th when I return and um, somewhere between um, the 29th and the 7th, you'll get a new version of the budget and we'll email that out to you. And I think that's about all I have and I should have any questions. Any questions for Manager Lanning? Hearing none, then we'll move on to City Clerk's report. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that it's Alaska Day tomorrow, and so City Hall will be closed, but the Library and Museum are open. I just saw signs on the door. Um, on Monday, in the atrium, Ruth Steele will be there um, handling early voting for the state election, and that will be Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30, up until the day before election day. So 22nd it starts, and up until uh, November 5th. Um, big day coming up for the finance department and the clerk's department. Uh, on Halloween, second half property tax is due and third quarter sales tax is due. So it's usually a busy afternoon at City Hall. It's a Wednesday this year. So. Uh, no leeway with holidays or weekends. Um, and that's about all I have to report. Okay, thank you. Questions for the clerk? Hearing none, then we'll move on to the staff quarterly reports. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll move on to correspondence. And a letter from Mayor Copeland to the Devos Trustee Council. A letter from the State Assessor's Office. Yes, go ahead. Um, I 
I could speak a little bit to the EVO support letter. I'm up here in Anchorage for ASM, but I was able to go to the EVO meeting today. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I went there just to let them know that uh, the mayor had asked me to go there on behalf of the captain. I was up here to let them know that Council had uh, made a new law available and that we supported their new project. And they did receive the funding that they asked. It has some um, contingent to it based off of um, some legal advice and then also um, public input, but it sounds like the meeting went well. I just went there for the public comment part, but then I lost earlier. Just a little update to that letter. Very good, thank you. Any other comments on the correspondence? Hearing none, we'll move on to ordinances and resolutions. Item 15 on our agenda, ordinance 1171, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Cordova, Alaska, authorizing the transfer of 269000 from the General Reserve Fund, Permanent Fund, to the Refuse Enterprise Fund for the purchase of a refuse truck. This is first reading and just takes a simple majority to pass. Move to approve. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve. Um, I think the manager's already given his comments on that. Probably one more. Go ahead. Yeah, one more. Mm -hmm. Trying to see the plan in this. Um, if you, I proposed a five percent increase for five years in refuse. If in the proposed budget for 2019, there right now is about $40,000 that are unencumbered from that rate increase. It's about $15,000 a year. We have significant funds for bear proof containers and public education. But if you get on this plan, just in refuse, for example, and at the end of a five-year course, you have 75,000 more in revenue, accounting for you know, other increases that happen naturally over time. You'd be able to pay for a truck like this in about four years. So every four years, you'd be on schedule to keep your fleet in shape. And I think that's the goal of what we're trying to do here. But given the way things have gone and where we are now, you know, we're at an emergency and I and I know this is this is not fun, it's not pleasant. And we have several of these agreements in place with the travel lift and other things where the 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 fund is being repaid. I think there's even money from Odiac that's going to to the general fund reserves. So there's there's a number of these ag agreements in place and it would be structured exactly like that if that's where you choose to go. You know, in your packet there are five options, uh, four or five options, five options for you to choose from. And one of those options, alternative D, while it exhausts the, the fund balance for Refuse, it is an alternative where the 169 is proposed to, to be repaid. So first payment in 2020, the terms are there for all five of the alternatives. And, and I think that's the connection of how this all works. And some of these are gonna be necessary until all your funds get on track to be able to replace your stuff. Okay, Council Member Jones. I just was mainly made the motion to get it on the table for discussion. Uh, yeah. He just said to, he wanted to get it for discussion. That's all. Uh, Councilmember Guard, do you make a second? I made the second. Um, these are the kind of things we get in a rock and hard between a rock and a hard spot on when we don't adequately fund the budget, and that's where we've been for a number of years. So this is just the first of many, I'm sure that we'll see with this. Okay, well, I guess to continue discussion, um, 
I would make a motion that we add alternative B with the first, second, and sixth bullets, making a seven year, 4% interest payments uh, beginning in 2020, borrowing the entire amount from the permanent fund. That would be my motion or my amendment. Yeah, we agree with that's a loan option. Did somebody second that? Yeah, I'm looking for a second for that motion that we can discuss. So can you state your motion one more time for me? My motion would be to, we need to, we need to, barring adding up, if we don't add anything to this ordinance, it's giving them the money from the permanent fund. So we need to add an option if we're gonna make it a loan. So I'm, at, I'm, my amendment is to add alternative B, to borrow the full amount from the permanent fund with the first payment due in 2020 and payments would be for seven years at 4% interest from that date. Second. Okay, um, I guess as the maker of the motion, I'll, I'll, I'll just state it's, it's fairly obvious. I don't have a problem. You know, the permanent fund is there for these purposes. We don't like to take money out of the permanent fund, but uh, especially for the enterprise funds, but um, they need the new truck as has been described. And uh, um, I think it's a relatively, um, it's, I look at it as an, another investment of our permanent fund monies. Um, it's being repaid at a reasonable interest rate uh, over a reasonable time period. So um, that's my preference for it. I, I'm not in favor of uh, giving the money from the permanent fund. I, I would be in favor of loaning it at these terms though. So uh, the second, Councilman Regard. Um, I think I've said what I need to say on this. Any other comments on the amendment? Uh, question real quick. Yeah, go ahead. So staff had recommended alternative C, which was borrowing uh, 229.492 from the permanent fund, and then a down payment upon purchase of 40,000 from the refuse depreciation fund. So I was just curious why the deviation from something where um, we would be using 40 grand from the depreciation fund, which is exactly what it's for, to replace equipment. Uh, why wouldn't we do that? I guess I wouldn't have a, a big argument with that. My my only my only thought was that I don't want to spend every nickel they've got and then have to come back to the permanent fund if something else breaks or they need new tires for a couple of trucks. So you know, I just as soon keep their depreciation fund there and and and, and not zero them out and be back here talking about the permanent fund again. James, from my point of view, that. Um, I think alternative A was was really unpalatable to everyone. Um, I think option C was on our part an attempt to to share the load a little bit to pay some down, not exhaust the the uh, reserve fund, and still have reasonable payments. But I, you know, I, I think we're okay with. Alternative B as well, and I think that that was the basis for C. Okay, so uh, the balance on the refuse depreciation fund right now is that hundred thousand, forty thousand, or more. Right? I don't remember. There's a hundred thousand in there. We take forty out. There'd still be sixty in there. Would be the idea. Well, I'm I'm fine with B or C. The reason why I wanted to question is because we had a staff recommendation for C, and so. I just wanted to hear from somebody to explain why we wouldn't go into staff recommendation. So if everybody's fine with B, then whatever, fine. Okay, any other comments on the amendment? Uh, this is Melina. I, I kind of had the same thoughts as uh, I said, I'm, I'm okay with alternative B or C. Um, it was nice to have a clarification from the staff. Um, I'm okay with either one. Okay, so the motion or the amendment is for alternative B with a seven year 4% interest payment rate beginning in 2020, borrowing the full amount from the permanent fund. Um, roll call, please. 
So on the amendment, Melina Meyer? Yes. David Allison? Yes. James Weiss is absent. Ann Schaefer is absent. Jeff Gard? Yes. James Burton? Yes. Ken Jones? Yes. So the amendment carries 5-0. Okay, so now we're on the main ordinance um, with that alternate B uh, inserted in there, wherever the appropriate spot is to insert it. I might um, do it all Figure that out for the bit. next, uh, for the second reading. But uh, any further discussion on that ordinance? Hearing none, then if you could take the roll on the main motion. Yes. Uh, David Allison? Yes. And Schaefer is absent. Jeff Gard? Yes. Melina Meyer? Yes. James Weiss is absent. James Burton? Yes. Ken Jones? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Okay, we have no unfinished business and no miscellaneous business. Tier 1 Harbor Facility Grant presentation by Interim Public Works Director and Harbor Master. Sam and Tony, welcome. On the phone, you should have gotten this in an email. I hope you can follow along. And I'll talk in the mic, but if I wander away, let me know if you can't hear me. So, yeah, tell me you'll hit me. <laughs> so we were asked to figure out what it would take to do a tier one harbor, harbor facility matching grant. And just for a little refresher, the tier one harbor facility matching grant is a $5, $5 million match to, a, to $5 million, $10 million total. There's no in between. If you go under that, then you go to tier two. We had that little presentation earlier. So that's um, what we're looking at is the tier one. And then I'm gonna see if my little arrows will work. Oh, good. So for the Harbor Commission, we gave this presentation uh, last week and um, these are kind of the goals and the objectives to get there. So we are so we plan on submitting a state tier one facility grant if we can come to terms on the, the match and how to repay it. We will be um, submitting a build grant, that's the federal grant, where the odds are, you know, not that great that you'll get it, but we're gonna do it. We're working with P&D. We got help to make us as competitive as possible. A build grant is 25. One of the things, 20, 28 million. 28 million is the tops on that. Last year, there was no match for rural communities, which we would fall under. Um, we won't know that for sure until the application and rules come out prior to the deadline. Um, we, we want the Harbor Commission to come together and you know provide a city council with a resolution on what their preferred options are for bonding and repayment. So there's our job, right? We got to decide. A we want to do. We want to do it, and the Harbor Commission has agreed to that. And now we got to decide how we're gonna do it and how we can get support to get it done. So there's lots of options, not, not a ton, but of course we can bond, we can go out for a bond. This is a average that Mr. Stavick gave me to put in here 4%. You'll see I have some payment options. So just keep in mind that those could change. Um, you're right, they will change, yeah. Um, so we could do a loan from the Cordova's permanent fund. Um, we could do a combination of bonding and a permanent fund loan. The concept there being, you know, if we did 2.5 million from the permanent fund, and I'm just throwing out numbers, um, would it be more successful to have a $2.5 million bond? So that's kind of the idea behind that. Um, we could put all our eggs in one basket and do a bill grant which we will be submitting in 2019 and see what happens. And then, of course, we are open for any creative ideas that you guys may have. Um, so we are on a timeline, and this is something we have to keep in mind. So we met with the Harbor Commission. Um, we're, our goal is to get you a resolution by the 7th. Um, 
Susan, we have to have the ballot, the bond amount and the ballot language on the December 5th city council meeting for approval. And you know, once that happens, then we got a ton of other stuff to do. But then the election is um, March of 2019. Um, I went backwards, wrong, wrong arrow, sorry. Okay, so these are estimated payments. Again, <laughs> they probably will change. $5 million for 20 years, 4%, 367. So, you know, whatever we decide, if, if we decide to move forward, whatever we decide we're gonna create revenue to make this payment, we are gonna be over that amount with the rev projected revenue because we just don't know for sure what it'll be. Um, so some possible payment options that we came up with is a harbor infrastructure fee. It's based on length of boats. Um, of okay, don't laugh when I say warpage. It's a difficult word for me. An implement of a fuel oil warpage rate. That was good. Increase harbor fees, local fish tax, add a mill to the current property rate, allocate a portion of the state raw fish tax, personal property tax on boats, all or a portion all allocated to harbor maintenance and upgrades. And I learned that if you do do a personal property tax, it has to be at the same mill rate as our property tax. Didn't know that. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, I know. We, we didn't really know that until after we put the slide together. Like, ooh, okay, well. So the other, you know, the last bullet is, do you have any ideas? You know, we're open for possible ideas. Um, I would maybe have a question. Sure. For somebody, <laughs> I don't know if the clerk would know the answer or not, but I know when, uh, when an ordinance, when a, what is it, an initiative is voted on by the people, then it's two years before it can be changed, before the council could change it. But yeah. could you can't overturn it, overturn what was done, but you can amend it in a so, lot of different so ways. So along with this bond vote, we could potentially put in a fuel tax that's some, somehow as much as we possibly can legally tied to the harbor. Well, and, as a funding source. Yeah, and, and I think the, the attitude towards paying that or not, I, I would certainly rather pay money that I can deduct for my taxes for, for something than pay for something that I can't do that for my taxes. So anyway, that's just, that's a thought for one funding source that we could throw that. I think that was kind of the idea behind increasing the warfage fee. Um, it's not implementation of a new tax to be increasing an existing. Yeah, but the warfage fee right now is, is pretty, pretty minimal. I mean, you'd have to, 10 times it to... Uh, well, if we, if we, okay, so we could just start. <laughs> so there's the breakdown. These are uh, what we chose to put in for an amount can be adjusted. Um, at the current number of vessels in the harbor, minus the one that went on the beach the other day, <laughs> we get 164, 400 with this breakdown as it's shown. And yeah, can you, we, that was kind of our idea behind the wharfage rate, which is a fee currently. So if you did it at 0 0.02 um, cents, <laughs> two cents per gallon, you'd get 112. If you did four, you'd get 224. Of course, that's gonna be variable because fuel changes across the board. These, this is like a five-year average of, of what has come across the docks. Yeah, well, I, I certainly prefer fees myself because those can't be overturned at an election. Yes. Um, but I don't know what that works out to be, but 17 cents per barrel versus two cents a gallon is it comes quite up a bit to, higher. Right, mm -hmm. so it goes up 84 cents and the charge would be one for two cents, a dollar and one penny per barrel. So it does increase that by 84 cents per barrel. I mean, we'll just be collecting peanuts in it now. Mm -hmm. Not very much. Yeah, you'll see it. Okay. 
Um, so the other uh, idea is a harbor rate increase, and you can see right there what we're collecting currently in wharfage charges, $47,250. So you would substantially increase that. Um, so this is just different <coughs> amounts of um, increases, and the bottom line is the revenue generated. So there's a few options to go for there. Um, this is kind of a, a chart that shows you, okay, currently you pay $41.95 for your annual per foot rate. If it went up 5%, it'd be $45.05. Just so you can get an idea of what it means on the ground. Um, but it just relates back to the previous table. So uh, the state raw fish tax, which is what we fund the general fund on, you know, there's the, the you certainly city council could donate, or not donate, but could allocate a portion of that to the harbor to pay, but again, that hammers on the general fund. Um, a one mil increase in property tax would be $214,000. To put that in on the ground, it's for every $100,000, it goes up 100 bucks a year. So if you had $250,000 house or property tax bill, it would be 250 a year or $20.85 a month. We could also look at a local fish tax, which these numbers are high. Uh, we did go back and look at some numbers and uh, this was estimated from that average of two, 2006 to 13, it was 75% landed. And it's a little high, but I still think like the 1% was around $300,000 with the new average. We didn't get, quite get to pounding that out yet. Um, this is a tax, so it would, we would need to move forward with the ordinance portion of it. Um, personal property tax on boats. So the value from the state is 41 million, basically $42 million worth of um, value in boats. And yeah, 11 mills would generate a lot of money and just ignore the five mills because that's wrong and we couldn't do it anyway. So. So here's a couple um, payment options to avoid and why. And I know we, um, I think the reasoning behind this is because this grant is very particular. They want you to not only be able to show how you're gonna pay it, it has to pay back the $5 million. You have to have it already in resolution form. It has to be passed, everything has to be there. But you also have to be able to prove that you have enough funding to maintain and operate the harbor as is and the new stuff once you get it. And it also means if we use the depreciation fund, you eliminate funds to fix the harbor. At 10 million bucks, we can't even fix the entire harbor that we wanna fix. So you're still gonna have to maintain the remaining plus everything else that's a part of the harbor. Um, the administrative fee here, I'm an example of what the administrative fee goes to. <laughs> um, and so you also have to be able to prove that you can operate and that's what the administrative fee helps happen. So the Harbor Commission meeting went really good. We had some really good discussions. Um, they do wanna move forward with attempting to get a tier one grant. Um, they're mulling around. You know, do we want to ask for 2.5 out of the permanent fund and bond 2.5? You know, it provides a more flexible payment, right? You cannot pay a bond back early. So your time frame is, you're committed to that. Um, you could have a little more flexibility if part of it was from the permanent fund with potentially maybe some additional funding because everybody would be excited about the new slips. Um, and then they narrowed down their payment options to the new in harbor infrastructure fee, which was what was the length base fee, the wharfage fee for oil fuel, um, to increase the harbor fees and the local fix fish tax. And so Tony and I's homework was to kind of maybe uh, get a little more precise on that fish tax so they can kind of look at the different combinations of ideas, because we, we it's gonna have to be more than one thing. 
in order to make, I mean, basically you gotta have at least a $400,000 revenue. And that, I guess, kind of also will depend on what the bond rate is when it really goes down. So, this is what you don't do when you go to the harbor. And I like that a lot, because I love it. This guy, right, he's like cleaning out his motor and his truck's in the <laughs> harbor. But anyway, that is our um, presentation and we will have something back to you from the Harbor Commission. But if you guys have any questions or any thoughts, um, we'll, we would love to hear them. I've got one right off the bat. Okay. All right, so as far as repayment goes, under no circumstances would I go for um, tying this to property tax because there's, you know, some of the, the young guys in our community have nothing to do with boats. They're going to use harbor infrastructure, and it needs to be um, attached to those of us that use the facilities. Yeah. So that's my two cents on repayment. And that was pretty much the harbor conditions um, feel on it as well. Anybody else? I was just going to ask, what's wharfage? So is that at the fuel dump? No. No, not at all. Wharfage is, uh, if, what my understanding of it is, it's any any uh, gallon that comes over the city dock, and where the ferry dock is, um, and gets pumped from their barge into their tanks. Yep. Kind of like how, you know, any fish brought over our city docks is, Warfage. Um, and so it would be all gallon fuel oil, not just oh, singling out everything. one specific yeah. user mm -hmm. like the motor oil tax did. So it's like a gross receipts on one industry. Be, yeah, there's no exemptions to it. During the great debate of 2017, um, I was told specifically by a certain fuel operator that they thought that we should have went with the wharfage charge and not the, you know, because that way everybody pays it because they have to pay it when they get their right. load they of fuel. Add it to the cost of. They just add it to the cost of the fuel. And so, so I'm in favor of that. You've heard my comments, so. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? Right. Yeah, this is Melina. Go ahead. Um, I'm on the same kind of has the Harbor Commission suggested for the, the payment options. Um, I'm leaning more towards the uh, fish tax and the oil morphage fee. Um, I think that those would be paid by the bigger, the bigger companies in town rather than the small business fishermen. Um, Paying fees, but I think all four of those are good options. The the property tax, I really can't get behind. Um, but I think this is a good presentation. I like how it was all laid out. Um, and also about the fees too, is something that you mentioned is paying for it all down the line. Like we're gonna fix as much as we can with the harbor with this grant and put everything into it. But you know, in 20 years, it's gonna need more work to done to it or in 10 years. So I think some of these taxes or fees can help maybe build up a little bit heavier uh, savings to be able to like, take care of our harbor for the future. Councilman yes, McGregor? Um, I'd just like a quick overview when we do our next workshop of the encumbered and unencumbered portions of the permanent fund and lay out what our expenditures are so we can see on the whiteboard, all this is going on, just so we know the war. Just so we know where we're lying at. But when you were talking about encumbrances earlier, you were talking about the general fund reserve. Well, the report I got that we all got, I guess, from from management didn't have the fund that was encumbered. It, that we were assuming that it was all from the general fund, but that was an assumption that we were making, and so there's some some questions on some of that still. Um, but it, it sounds like everybody's leaning towards a bond. And I guess my only comment there is if, if we decide to put something to a vote to the people, um, 
we need to make an effort uh, at public education on that uh, as much as we can. This time, the last election, we kind of stayed to the side, but if we're trying to make this a project that's good for the city, we need to prove to the citizens that are going to vote that, that it's good for the city. Make that effort. I guess one other thing that I forgot to mention about the build grant is you can use that money to match. So if we are so good as to get a build grant, we could take five million of that and put into this. So just another, and not have to bond. Right. Not well after I've had the <laughs> We could, but we'd still have to come up with a payment. <laughs> Tony was paying for, oh, Second Street, out of his Powerball. In the New Harbor. In the New Harbor. Yeah. That's so generous. If I win the Mega Millions, I'll down it all for the city. <laughs> Manager Lane? Well, I think we're in the same decision-making pattern that tried to emphasize for the last couple of years. The first question is, do you want to commit to doing this? And if the answer is yes, and everybody's committed to that, we'll take the steps necessary to go through the process. And if you're not, then it doesn't help as much. Well, it sounds like we're gonna get something from the Harbor Commission soon and we can commit at that time. Well, it sounds, I, you know, I guess I just take take what I hear around the council table. But if, if, if I was if I was guessing, I'd say it's it's pretty well there the support. But uh, we need something to vote on or to show our commitment. Yep, Councilman Regard. As far as the length of the time frame that we've got to do all this on, which is rather short and compressed, um, I think is. Concise and precise information as you guys can get for us will allow us, you know, take a look at what bond rates are doing. They've been doing this at a fairly steady clip here of late. Um, so if we make some realistic assumptions and stuff like that, I think it would help us make a decision. Well, since the finance guy hasn't retired yet, we can get that. Okay. <laughs> If he retires, we're in trouble. Chain him to the desk. He can retire. He'll still have to answer if he wants to eat. Okay, any other questions or comments for Sam or Tony here? Okay, thank you mm -hmm. both. And uh, we'll look forward to something from the Harbor Commission. Okay, the next thing on our agenda is the pending agenda, calendar and elected officials list. Okay, I have a few things. Okay, go ahead, clerk. Um, here, so the comprehensive plan is, ha uh, some work sessions are happening. Wait a minute, is that right? That's what these are called. These are the two work sessions that I just advertised. Yes. Um, the 23rd and the 25th, um, and anyway, there's a flyer that tells all the details of where and um, the times because they're they're in a few different places, a few different rooms. Sorry, um, and Agnubeck is doing that, and then they're also doing the joint uh, healthcare facil facilitated meetings um, with uh, NBE. So our part of that. The first part of that for council is a joint meeting. I'm calling it a joint work session on the 26th, uh, 11.30 to 1.30, and it's upstairs in the vacation room. The Cordova Center is busy that week. Um, well, we're talking October or November. October. That's your busy week. Remember, you were told about it <laughs> a few times. All, all my weeks have been a little busy. I know. I understand. Uh, and, but I didn't get those all on the calendar part here, so sorry about that. Um, Leif, did you want to say more about the comp plan ones than what I said? Um, no, but we still would like to have someone next to the city council on that thing. Comprehensive plan committee needs <laughs> one ex officio council member, and we can try and appoint that next time, but you could 
express your interest to Clay, and at least maybe you could attend those meetings if you wanted to with the committee. Um, Just FYI, I will be gone from the 23rd through the 28th. Okay. I'll be out of town, but I may be able to go town by phone. Okay. Um, I don't know if I put it on also. No, I forgot. Uh, November 5th was the day we picked for a joint special meeting with the um, CCMC Authority Board. Did we say 6 o'clock on that? I think so. Um, and that might need an executive session and I don't know. I can't say it's better to be in person. Obviously, however you can attend would be beneficial. Um, and then James Weiss had asked me to forward an email to you guys. So I know he wants a, um, I mean, I think he, he just wants it as a discussion item on the November 7th um, agenda. He made a f quite a few points in his email, but, um, and there are copies of that if anybody wants one. Um, up on, on bears and the bear issue. I'm okay with having that as a discussion item on the okay. seventh meeting and put his email as a back. As the item? Okay, great. Okay. And I had also had emails from two other council members too, so there's obviously support for that. Okay. Um, and that's it as far, I mean, on November 7th, we might want to bring up the fact that the second meeting in November is the day before Thanksgiving and everybody should be home making pumpkin pies. So we'll see how that goes. So does. I will be home making pumpkin pies. <laughs> yeah, does anybody else have anything else then? Anybody have anything else for the pending agenda? Oh, maybe I'll just say one more thing that the um, advertising is out still for the vacancies that are coming up in November on all the boards and commissions. So you might want to talk to your friends and neighbors who might be interested in a board or commission seat. Thanks. Okay. Next thing on our agenda is audience participation. Anything anybody wants to talk about, agenda or not? Name, who you represent, if not yourself. Hello, good evening, Kathy Renfeld, Court of the Chamber. I just wanted to come and um, thank City Council for its ongoing support of the Chamber and kind of let you know a couple things that I've been working on and some possibilities for the future and some roadblocks as well. Um, so during the Economic Summit, it became clear um, how much need there is for small business support and development in Cordova. Um, there's, up until this point, there really hasn't been any source of small business support um, in the community. And in other um, larger communities, of course, there's a small business development center that can help you. Um, here in Cordova, we don't have access to one, and it's not like we can just drive to the next town to, to get access. So I've reached out to the Alaska Small Business Development Center, and through a, a rural, rural development program, I've gotten us um, to a point where we can, um, we're eligible to um, get one of our staff trained to offer this um, and have access through the Alaska Small Business Development Portal to start offering things like um, services to help people create business plans, to get financial advising, um, to create scenarios um, where they can determine whether or not um, they can go forward with new projects in their business, transition plans for businesses that are looking to um, pass on their business or retire. This is especially important in our community where oh, most of our businesses are sole proprietorships. Um, we've already seen some kind of key businesses 
um, go under in our town um, right on Main Street because they didn't they weren't able to put together any kind of a, a plan or, or get the support they needed to um, keep that business going um, once they wanted to retire. So the issue there is that we have to devote some staff time to get this person trained and to then implement these services. And with our current um, program and event load right now, one full-time and one part-time staff, it's uh, not really possible without making some big cuts in um, other program areas. So that's a roadblock we're, we're finding there. Um, one new, another new opportunity, as I've mentioned before, is we've uh, been courting some tour groups that um, small tour groups that would, are interested in coming to Cordova. They're interested in um, the fact that this is an authentic Alaska community, that the beauty of Prince William Sound, Sound is still intact here and we haven't been um, changed or altered um, by tourism and other factors that have changed other places in Alaska. So it fits really well with um, the feel of our, of our culture here. And um, 66 high-end, high um, high-income passengers every week, May through September is what they're looking at starting in 2021. And there's still a lot of work that needs to be done um, to get this finalized and locked down. Um, most of that work will be done through the Chamber's office, um, helping to coordinate and facilitate and work with tour partners and landowners um, to make sure that everything can, can happen for these guys. Um, and just another, just the other day, I also received another correspondence from a group that wants to bring two to three hundred people in a couple times during the summer of 2020. Um, these are exceptional opportunities uh, for our community. We haven't had access to um, this kind of, of targeted tourism in a while, and I think um, it has to do probably with some of the outreach that we've been um, starting to do. And um, but again, they're both going to be uh, requiring some extra work from chamber staff to facilitate. Um, right now our hands are kind of tied as far as adding any kind of new programming like that. And that's one of the reasons that um, we are we're looking to expand our revenue sources at the chamber. And one way that we're hoping to do that is by adding another staff member that would be focused on events and development. Their job would be to um, grow membership, maximize revenue from events, seek out new sponsors and new advertisers and make the best use of all of our um, campaigns and materials that are already out there to try to grow revenue. Um, basically would be leveraging any extra revenue that we could get, we could leverage into even more even more revenue for the chamber, which would equate to even more work that we'd be able to do, which would equate to um, more revenue to the city and more benefits to the community and, and to the businesses in the community. So I just wanted to give you all an idea um, of that, and um, I hope that we can continue to, to work together. Um, there's lots of ways that we could be working together more that um, I think we can, can grow as well. So thanks for your support. Thank you, again. Any other audience comments? Looks like we're down to the newspaper, the radio, and staff. Huh? <laughs> okay, council comments. We'll start on the phone with uh, Council Member Meyer. Uh, no comment really. Sorry, I can't be there today. It's a little harder to do a meeting on the phone, but um, I'll see you guys next meeting. And thanks everyone for coming. I can't see who's all there and everything, but hi from Anchorage. <laughs> okay, Council Member Burton. Uh, no, just thanks to staff for putting the, the information together tonight, and uh, that's it. Oh, wait, no, I do have their comments. Uh, if you hadn't heard already, um, through the efforts of a lot of people, uh, John Renner, Taya Thomas, Ken Jones, Chelsea Hazeman, and others. Uh, forgive me for not remembering everybody, but uh, we got the 2020 Board of Fish meeting moved back to Cordova, almost lost it, uh, but that's something to look forward to. So uh, good job and kudos to those people also. And uh, ACRs one and two of Board of Fish were defeated. So that was good. Big win for the industry and our region. And that's it. Thank you. Council Member Jones. Yeah, uh, echoing all James' comments. I'm up here in Anchorage for the Board of Fish meeting, the PISWAC meeting. So, sorry I couldn't attend in person. Um, 
I know I definitely feel like I'm more effective in, in person and hate being on the phone, but uh, yeah, up here at the Pinswack meeting, things are going well there. Uh, Port of Fish went well for our industry and for our community. It was really close, you know, we were really close to losing that 2020 meeting. Originally it was unanimous to have it in Anchorage and uh, they brought it back up for for a rediscussion um, after a lot of people expressed concerns to board members um, and then it passed to bring it back to Cordova by a 4-3 vote, so very, very thin margin there. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely need to stay on top of them in the future. Uh, there's a big push to try to get more of these meetings in the urban centers and uh, it's important to keep them in region. Uh, thank you everybody for coming out tonight and participating. Um, I uh, appreciate all the staff work on uh, trying to get a plan forward for replacing our aging harbor facilities. I think that's a really important thing for us to be spending time on. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Gard. Um, echo everybody else's comments. Um, I think I said everything else I had to say earlier. All right, sounds good. Yeah, uh, thanks you guys for for being on the phone. I know it's it's not as easy to, to be on the phone and attend these meetings and sometimes difficult to hear and, and participate that way. And uh, it's difficult for us to see your hands when you want to say something. So I appreciate you guys uh, putting the time in and, and being there. I did uh, listen to the Board of Fish meetings uh, on my iPad for, for two days. And, and although that's much better in person as well, I'm, Sure, it probably wasn't uh, wasn't any more exciting, but uh, it was a good win for Cordova and uh, and the industry. But uh, you know, everybody needs to remember that that was just one of the little battles along the road. This this war is going to go on for a long time, and uh, we need to keep diligent on on that. But it uh, sounds like we fared pretty well with uh, Evos and and this, and um, so. Congratulations and thank you to to all those who put in that that effort on that. Um, I too would like to thank staff for for their efforts uh, on uh, the budget. We're we're getting there and uh, uh, wish the native village of Eak well with their their uh, um, sobriety celebration i believe that she didn't mention it but i think they've got a proclamation that that they want the mayor to sign from the city of cordova and, and that should be on our next yes our next yeah. agenda and uh, that was that was fine with her to have that so i think they need that for uh, showing our support for for that program so anyway that being it do we have an executive session tonight yeah.